Well, thanks so much, Sarah, and welcome everyone to our September webinar. And as she said, um, we are going to be looking at how we can increase efficiency by doing some admin cleanup, you know, in Bullhorn. So I have a few PowerPoint slides I'd like to review with everyone first, and then we'll get right into Bullhorn. All right. So today I'll be covering with you some tips for archiving records. We'll also look at using mass update tools to clean up your data. I'll give you some suggestions for general database maintenance and how to engage your staff in improving data quickly to increase efficiency. All right, so why would you choose to archive a record rather than delete it? Well, you could have a situation where a candidate has found a full-time job and maybe has asked to be removed from your active list. When a record is archived, it remains in Bullhorn, but no longer returns in any search results. So let's take a look right now in Bullhorn. I'll just be switching browsers here. And we're gonna go to our main menu and open up the candidate list. So once that list loads, I always remind users to double check the upper right hand corner for the clear button, just in case there's a previous search or any filters that may be applied um, to your list. I don't see that, so I'm confident that I'm looking at a complete list of all of my candidate records in my database. So I'm gonna click into the search window here, and I'm going to use these fields that you see here under additional criteria. First one being the candidate status. And I'm gonna tell Bullhorn to include all of my active uh, status candidates in my search. And then another field to utilize here would be the last note, because I'm curious um, to see how old some of these notes are on my active candidate records. So I'm gonna choose the before operator here and then choose a date a couple years in the past, like January 1st of 2016. Now, once I've entered that criteria, I'll simply run my search to get my results. Now, when you look at this page, and if I check the checkbox here on the top left, you can easily see that I have 29 records that are active and if we take a look at that last note column, which is right here, some of these notes are fairly old. You know, so the idea is, are they really active? Uh, now, one thing I could do before I archive these records is possibly ask one of my recruiters to follow up with the candidates, you know, just to see what their current status is before we archive them. But let's say in this example, we do want to archive this total list. All I would do is click in the checkbox here at the top, and then remember that only selects the first 25 records in my list, so I'll need to click in this blue area here to select them all. And then I can go to the selected dropdown and choose change status. Now from here, I'm able to select the archive status, and then I can just save that update. And now I've effectively archived those 29 records. Now, at any time in the future, whether it's next week or several months from now, I am able to filter this list just to view those candidates that are in an archive status, because perhaps maybe one or more of them are now available again. So I can do that whenever needed. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that archive records do not return in any searches that you conduct. Um, even if you are using our find field to look for a candidate record, if they're in this status, they will not return in a search. Now, if I clear that search, just to show you, I could later come back to the status column and filter on those that are in an archive status to bring up that list of candidates once again. And if, for example, I talk to Rusty and he is now available, you know, I could easily update his status um, if I wanted to, uh, 
either by using the inline editing feature or by using the checkboxes on the left if I was selecting a group of records. All right, so keep that in mind, but I can always come back here when I filter on archive, it will bring up those candidates. And again, I could use this inline editing feature to change him back to active if he is now in fact available. All right, now you can also do the same thing for any companies that may have gone out of business. Let's take a look. I'm going to navigate back to my main menu here and click on companies. So I'm looking at a complete list of all the company records in my database right now. And I'm going to select one of these companies that have at least a couple of associated contacts, uh, like Bloom Energy here. So if I select the checkbox to the left, I am able to come here if Bloom has gone out of business and change its status. And just like with the candidates, we have an archive status. Then I would just need to save that update, of course. Now, another tip, though, is whenever you are archiving a company record in Bullhorn, you should also archive the associated contacts. And, you know, it's really easy to tell if a contacts company has been archived by just referring to the details card that appears on the contacts record. Let me show you what I mean. If I click on the name of the company here, Bloom Energy, I can open up the individual company record. And then if I navigate to the contacts tab, we can easily see that there are two contacts here associated with Bloom, John and Missy. Now, if I click on one of these contacts names, I can open up their individual record. And right here on the overview tab, we have a details card. And one thing that you'll notice is that the company status displays, and we can easily see now that this company has been archived, but the status field is referring to the status of John Smith's record. And so to my earlier point, I would want to update his status now to archive since this company uh, is now out of business. And because we have that field displaying on that particular card, it makes it very easy to make that quick update. Now, going back to my PowerPoints here, we've covered archiving records. And so now I would like to talk a little bit more about using mass update tools to clean up your data. You know, we don't always want to archive records simply because we may want them, you know, to still appear in our search results. As a reminder, though, mass updates can only be made by Bullhorn administrators. So one example might be we might choose to mass update contacts to a passive status if we haven't done business with them for a while. Let's take a look at that next. Navigating back to Bullhorn, what I'm going to do is go to our main menu and open up the contact list next. And again, I'm looking at a complete list right now of all the contacts in my database. And I could do a similar search on this list as what I did earlier on the candidate one. Let's click into the search window and add some additional criteria. Now, one of the, the true advantages, you know, of Bullhorn is that whenever you run a search, it remembers your most popular fields that you like to search on. And as you can see here, I already have the status of the contact record um, indicated. So I can simply tell Bullhorn to include all of my active status contacts currently, and then in addition to that, I'm also going to use that last note field again and look for any contacts where the last note is before January 1st of 2016. And then I'll simply run my search to bring up that list. Now, just checking our results, 
we can see that we have over 100 records, 168 to be exact. Now, one of the things I could do, um, a very quick mass update would be to select that checkbox on the top left and then go to the selected drop down and change the status. In our drop down list here, we do have a status called passive. So if they're not currently giving us any business or they haven't in a while, this might be an appropriate status to use for those particular contacts. All I need to do now at this point is save that update. A couple of more suggestions going back here to our slides. Just um, regarding general database maintenance. I'd like you all to think about records that may be missing email addresses that you have in Bullhorn. Um, and also some cleanup that you might want to do on both your placement and your submissions list. Because periodically, you may want to look for contacts and maybe even candidates without valid email addresses in Bullhorn. Because, you know, without an email address, you're really unable to forward resumes to your clients or even conduct a mass mailing with candidates, maybe about, you know, a big project that you have coming up. So let's go back to Bullhorn and take a look at our contact list. And of course, that was the last list we were on earlier, so I am going to clear out all of my filters and my previous search to show you how we may be able to identify those contacts that are missing email addresses. So we'll click into the search window once again. And this time, I would want to be sure that I add the additional criteria field of the email one, and that's just what we happen to call that field in our database, yours might be labeled the primary email address or their work email because it's a contact record. Remember, the terminology can vary a little bit, but what we're going to do here is choose to exclude anyone um, that uh, is missing an email address in that field. So in order to do that, we're going to use the at symbol with the asterisk after it. Now, when I select those symbols, basically when I run this search, what I'm asking Bullhorn to do is to provide me with a list of contacts without a primary email address. Because remember that little asterisk serves to replace the missing letters. So when we click search, we will come up with our list and let's just check here to see that Gosh, we have quite a few, over 700 records that are missing email addresses. Now, one option might be to have someone on my team try to track down the correct emails for some of these people, or we could choose to just simply archive these records. Um, and of course, if we wanted to do that, um, we could come here to just simply change the status. And remember, you should have that archive status in your database in order to do that. Now, what about that placement cleanup that I was referring to earlier? Using the placement list, we can find candidates whose placements ended and who should be available for new placements, but maybe we're not finding them because they haven't been updated yet. So let's take a look at that. We're going to go back to our main menu, this time opening our placement list. Now, one of the columns that you'll want to be sure that you have in your view is the employment type column, and you can already see that on my list. However, if it wasn't there, we could easily go to the columns menu, as you know, and just start typing in a keyword and pretty quickly we can see that the employment type column is definitely in our view. Looks like I already have a filter set to display just my contract placements in my view. And that's really what I wanna focus on because when a contract ends, these are the candidates that I may be able to use on new assignments. 
The other column though that would be important here would be the scheduled end date. And you can see that this column is also currently in my view. And I would want to sort this in ascending order because this is going to allow me to see those placements that are either missing end dates altogether or ones with the oldest end dates at the very top of my list. And now what I could do is have maybe my recruiters reach out to see if these candidates are in fact available. You know, because if we look at the scheduled end date, a lot of these are either missing end dates, but if you look at the start date, some of those are quite a ways in the past. So it's a good assumption that either these candidates are no longer available or they may be ready for something else. Now we can do similar cleanup on the submissions list. And this encourages candidates who were maybe previously passed over to work with you again. Remember your submissions list, and we happen to call it the internal submissions list. You may uh, have different terminology. You might call it the short list. Either way, it's the same list that will show you all of your candidates who are in the pipeline and where they are on various different jobs or vacancies. So once I have this list open, I'm going to apply several filters here, uh, starting first with the job status. And I'm going to display all of those that are currently in a place status, meaning somebody has been placed on these particular positions. Next, I'm going to navigate over here to the status column, which we all know is the submission status of the candidate for the particular job. And so I could certainly choose any value here that indicates that the candidate is still in the running for the particular position. For example, maybe choose any interviewing status. And you can see we have several. We have interview scheduled, a phone, second, third, or even a final interview. So once I filter on that column, I'm able to see candidates that obviously were not selected if they're still in that status on the job. And just to show you, you know, a, a, an example here from this list, if I click on one of these jobs, like for example, this CEO job, and if we navigate to the internal submissions tab of this record, we can easily see that if we expand the interviewing section here, David Pumpkins is still in that interview scheduled status. However, if we look at the placement section, our candidate Janine is the candidate who was actually placed in the position. So all I need to do now is go back to my internal submissions list. And then for that CEO job, and the candidate David Pumpkins, if I select the checkbox on the left, I can easily come here to my selected drop down and change the status here to client rejected. And that's mainly because the, the client went with another candidate. And now my recruiter can follow up with David and potentially submit him to another job. All right, now going back to my PowerPoints here, I'd like to just cover some tips for engaging your staff to help them improve their data. And then overall, that will help increase their efficiency. So a couple of things that you might want to consider is maybe using field hints on some of your fields on some of your records in Bullhorn. Also, hiding any unused fields and even making less fields required. If you have um, maybe some recruiters who aren't entering information completely or even correctly in Bullhorn, the field hints or even the descriptions can help. Let me give you a quick example. Maybe your recruiters are adding a range to the desired salary field when they should only be adding a single number. So we can fix this by adding that hint using one of our admin tools. 
So going back to Bullhorn here, I'm going to click on our main menu, open up our admin folder, and go to field mappings. Now, because we're focusing on the candidate record, we'll just expand that entity. And I can use our label column to filter on any of the salary fields. And the desired salary field is the one that I was interested in in this example. So if I just expand that, I'm able to have access to the hint field. And here I might type something in like, this field should contain a single value, not a range. Now, all I need to do is save that update, and we'll come back to the uh, candidate record in just a few moments, and I can show you how that hint would now display in that desired salary field. But, you know, it's also helpful to check the fields that are currently used on your records to make sure that they really are necessary and just remove any fields that aren't being used. Now you can do this by filtering any list by the field that you're considering deleting. And if it's truly blank, then you know that you certainly could hide it. Let's try this with the contact list. I already have it open here in my left navigation pane. I'm gonna clear out all of my filters first. And if we add the email three column to our list here and save that, let me just scroll over to the right to show you that for the most part, it looks like this field is pretty much blank. All right. So I could go back to field mappings. This time I need to expand my contact entity and I can search for those email fields using the label column header and in the email three field here I can simply check the hidden checkbox to hide that field on the contact record. You know most contacts may have one or maybe even two email addresses but as we can see, the email three field really wasn't being used much, so it just makes sense to hide it. And we'll just save that update as well. Now, one other tip, you know, having too many required fields can lead to bad data in your system. If it doesn't really need to be required, then it shouldn't be. So another example might be um, on your job record. Let me go back to the main menu and open up our jobs list. And if we take a look at some of the columns that we have displayed here, I'm just going to scroll over to the right, you can see that we actually have two different fields for branch information. Now you may or may not have this on your record, keep in mind, you know, your fields can vary somewhat, but if you notice that you do have a particular field, that really isn't being used, and especially if one of those is required, then we can make changes to that by going to field maps again. So this time we need to expand our job entity. And using our label column header, once again, I'm just going to type in the keyword branch. And if you take a look here at the branch code field, which is one of the branches, uh, branch fields that we are using on our job record, it is currently required. All I need to do is uncheck that box and then just save my update so that that field is no longer required. So it's an easy way to make quick updates in Bullhorn. Now, finally, I would like to log out of Bullhorn and log back in very quickly just to show you my update to that desired salary field on our candidate record. Because, you know, with the uh, new Novo interface, just refreshing your screen will not automatically update those changes. So it is necessary to log out and log back in to see those updates. 
So let's do that. And then I'll be able to show you the update. Once we're logged in, we'll go to one of my sample candidate records. And using my find field, I'm going to look for my friend Max Bullhorn. And there he is right at the top of my results list. And then I'll simply navigate to the edit tab of his record. And if I scroll down here to the rate information section, here's my desired salary field. And you'll notice when I click in the field now, that hint displays. And it does tell the user that this field should contain a single value, not a range. So that should help to clean up the data to make sure that people are not getting frustrated and that they're entering the correct information on the record. So just going back here to my slides one last time. Today we covered many different ways to increase your team's efficiency just by cleaning up your Bullhorn database. We looked at archiving records, using the mass update tools. I gave you some tips just for general database maintenance and also how to really engage your staff and improve the data to increase their overall efficiency. So I really appreciate you joining today. I, I hope that you found this content helpful, um, but for more information, you know, you can always check out our customer community and search on admin tools. And you can do that from the help button in the upper right-hand corner of our interface. So Sarah, back to you for any questions. I thought I saw a few that came in. Awesome. Thank you, Nancy. Yes, we did get a few. Um, I think we have time for one or two. Our okay. first one is, how can, I, how can I find an archived candidate record in Bullhorn? Okay, great. Well, remember, if um, you try to search for a particular candidate, if they call you after a year or so and say, hey, I'm now available again, they're not going to return in those fast find results. So what you really need to do is navigate to your candidate list, just make sure your status column is in your view, and it probably will be. And you can simply filter on the archive status, which is already in place here. Um, but remember, if you come to this list, you're going to see everybody in every status. But by adding that filter, it will isolate those records for you. And then let's say Tom is the candidate who's calling you, you can simply click the little edit pencil to the right of his status field and update his status to active if he's now ready for work once again. Excellent, thanks Nancy. Our next question is, we don't have the passive status for contacts. How can we add that to Bullhorn? And that's another great question because you know the uh, drop down values in many of these fields may be different in your database than what I have in mine. But you would just need to use your field mappings tool. So again, going to our admin folder, we would click on field mappings and then just expand our contact entity. And I always find it easiest to use the labor, label uh, column to search for a particular field like status. And then if I simply expand that field, I have access to the value list. And then you would just need to enter uh, the value for passive in this field here. Now you can see I already have it, but remember whenever you're adding in values, they are listed using comma separated values. No spaces are required. Once you've added that option, just click your save button, log out of Bullhorn, and the next time you go to the status field on your contact record, you'll see that status available. Awesome, thank you, Nancy. So we actually have run our 30 minutes through, so we're gonna end the webinar there. But as a reminder for anyone that joined late, we will be sharing the webinar recording with all attendees within the next 24 hours or so, and we'll follow up via email for any questions that came in that we didn't have time to cover during the Q&A. For any additional training resources, as Nancy mentioned, don't forget to log into the Learning Hub through the customer community at help.bullhorn.com. Thanks everyone, enjoy the rest of your day.
Thank you.